Okay, fight fans, fight fiends, welcome back to Manny's Thoughts. I, of course, Manny MTL or Manny Montreal. Make sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Patreon, and obviously, thefightcity.com. As usual, I'll give you guys my thoughts on what's going down in the world of combat sports. Let's get started. First up, as usual, congratulations are due, so here we go. Congrats to Jessica the Cobra Camara, Louis Bear Tikuto Altador, and Michael Zuski, who delivered some of the prettiest bodywork I've gotten to see up close and personal in a while. Let's listen. Whoo, that is tasty. Also, congratulations to two heavyweights, Canadian heavyweight Adam Braywood, successful again, and also congratulations to Bogdan Dinu, and now WBA heavyweight champ, international heavyweight champ. He's 18-0 with 14 KOs. Hopefully he comes back to Montreal, fingers crossed. Congratulations to all the boys and girls from TKO. What a great night of fights at the Bell Center. No major issues some solid fights between you and me I have a very good feeling the UFC is paying attention just go look at that roster and come back to me in two years you're gonna see there is a couple stars on that roster right now the UFC is paying attention hopefully they come back soon good job TKO congratulations Jean Pascal they wrote you off it's a bit of a weird retirement I'll say what everyone else here is saying. Obviously, it would have been nice for you to do it here. However, you were successful when they really didn't think you would be against a really young, promising fighter. I don't think you can write a better send-off. Jean Pascal, fuck everyone. Stay retired. Bless you. Also, congratulations to King Kong. Now... I'm a little disappointed because obviously it was a setup for Wilder's next fight. And I don't really understand the whole, you know, banning him, but then bringing him back. And then somehow he's WBC number two, but I just, just messed up. But I like King Kong, so <sighs> he fought a guy that lost five times in a row in his last five fights. In the last three, he was knocked out cold. I didn't give him much of a chance against King Kong. And I know it was a last minute fight, but I mean, I go after the sanctioning bodies here and whatnot when they do wonky shit, and that is some wonky shit, so. Congratulations, Caleb Truax! 40 to 1 underdog. Fuck them all, Caleb! Congrats, bud! That was fucking great! Uh, the Gale just didn't look himself. The layoff was too long. Uh, you, you might have retired him. A lot of people wrote off Caleb Truax. <sighs> Caleb Truax is my, my little hope of the week. As you know, it's been a tough week. I'll get there. Congratulations, Vasil Lomachenko. I did not pick him to win. I was really hoping the Jackal would do it. <sighs> Listen, I, I have to admit it. The guy's a once-in-a-lifetime fighter. He's very good. Not so much, like, I wouldn't be saying this if it would have went the distance and he would have just chopped him up the whole time. He made him quit. And not just that, he made the last three guys quit. There's something about him. It's legit. I do have to point out, you know, Rigo was older. And this was about him making a big check. And guys have ducked him forever when he was in his prime. And there was a major size difference. But Loma's doing what he can, man. It's not like people are stepping up to fight him either. So there's talks of Mikey Garcia. That might be interesting, but I don't know. I've gone against Lomachenko too many times now. I think I gotta stop. <sighs> Gonna do a bit of a different congratulations, but in my world, congratulations, Tevin Farmer, on becoming a new champion. The judges didn't see it that way. 
some real bullshit. I'm really hoping somebody out your way makes a fucking shit show out of this. Gets you a rematch or something because, I mean, I had you winning 10 rounds. 10 out of 12. You were gassing. That was a tough fight for you. But, I mean, you didn't lose. Okay, so something I don't normally do, but I do want to touch on losing. Rigondo. Ryan Ford. Shaquille Finn. Flavius Bia. All losers this week. None of them should hang their head low. And I'll include Tevin on that one. All of them stepped up to challenges that others would not have taken. Now, everyone's losses are kind of different. Tevin didn't lose. And Rigo straight up quit. Which hurts, but it's his right. He's a freaking human being. The minute he steps through the ropes, if he accepts the fight, the minute the first round starts, that's it. You have no choice, but you have to give him respect. No matter what happens. Okay, I made fun of Chris Algieri, but I give Chris Algieri respect. Uh, I'll make fun of his corner with the whole him coming out of his cage thing, but uh, I'll still give him respect. The guy's a fighter. He's doing something that I know I can't do. So, uh, continuing on with that thought, sometimes uh, we take challenges that we're not ready for. And that could be a skill thing or a mentality thing. Take it any which way you want. I didn't get to watch Flavius' fight. But uh, I'm assuming he's not happy with the loss either. He was fighting for a belt. Shaquille was fighting for an opportunity to fight for a belt. And Ryan went all the way to Russia to fight for a belt. They're all real fighters. And uh, if you're a real fight fan, like I am, you're in win, lose, or draw. So uh, here's hoping the boys get back into the gym, double their efforts, and come back and show people what they're really about. Because they're not about those losses. Now as for Rigo, if he sets off into the sunset, I'm okay with it. As far as news is concerned, we got a couple things to talk about. The Pac versus Mac fight. Pacquiao McGregor. I wasn't okay with it for Mayweather. I won't be okay with it for Pacquiao. It's stupid. It's real stupid. Uh, more stupid than that, Dana White claiming he would sue Manny Pacquiao. You ever think that maybe your problems that you're not paying your fighters enough and that your issue is not suing someone else, but maybe making it so that another sport is not, you know, more interesting? Just saying. As far as the light heavyweight champ is concerned, Adonis Stevenson, the WBC has now come out and um, spoken negatively about his choices and about his next choice to possibly fight Badu Jack. Claiming that Alvarez has waited long enough. Now speaking of Badu Jack. That fight with Adonis might actually not happen. And here's the two reasons why I think so. First, Nathan Cleverly is fighting this weekend. And should he be successful. That's a fight Badu can do. In a new weight class. And uh, the Cleverly clan's good with a Heyman. So... If Badu wanted to, he said it in the past. Now, uh, the other possibility would be Caleb Truax, who just defeated De Gale. Now, Badu could go back down in weight, possibly, and fight a Caleb Truax, who, for all intents and purposes, would be an attractive fight. Seeing how there's a belt, and that... Uh, you know, the odds would probably be in Badu's favor. Now, the last thing I'll mention off of all this news 
is that now with Jean Pascal retired and no official news from Lucien Bute, I got to thinking maybe Lucien can have the proper send off and have a retirement fight in Montreal or Quebec City. I'd like to see him against Caleb Truex. That'd be a solid fight in my book. Now as for the Wilder Ortiz thing I mentioned already, uh, I guess that fight's going to get made next. Um, I'm picking Ortiz. Hopefully there is no fuckery before the fight actually happens. And uh, we get a heavyweight champ that can box. I personally am looking forward to, you know, a champ that knows the fundamentals. Last but not least, news-wise, I'm going to have a crazy busy week. I don't have snow tires yet, and it's going to be the law here, like, this week. So, I'm trying to figure that out. And, uh, there's a small possibility I might take public transit and whatnot. A little complicated, because i got to go all the way to Laval. Not the point. There is a bunch of stuff going down this week in the Fight City. Make sure to check out thefightcity.com for great articles and posts on the daily. Going down this week, we've got public workouts, press conferences, weigh-ins, and then the big fight at the Place Bell in Laval. David Lemure, Billy Joe Saunders, the straps on the line, public workout Tuesday, press conference Thursday, weigh-ins Friday. I'm going to attempt to do my best to go to these. Uh, seeing as how I'm carless, but, um, yeah, busy week, nonetheless, so make sure you stay tuned. So before I get started with what you can watch this week, I just want to point out there's a couple of our fighters fighting. Uh, first up, Jordan Balmier will be fighting in Mexico. He's gone all the way to Mexico. I really respect it when fighters, uh, will travel for a fight. They got to stay active, and this is definitely a young man and a team that understands that. Then, Thursday night in Sorel, Quebec, the hard-hitting David Teroux is going to headline. I, the Tigers, putting on a little pre-show card. They actually have uh, an American fighter on that card. I guess it's from Golden Boy. There's so many fights this week. Uh, check out, also a quick notable, Ablek Kusenov on there. Young AK-47 killer. Make sure to check him out. Going down in France, Christian Mibli will be fighting also on that card. Montreal native Oscar Rivas. So, as far as what we can watch this week on TV and what's going down, obviously, in the Fight City. Tuesday, we got one championship. That's probably at like 7 in the morning. It's going down in Shanghai. Wednesday on ESPN, you got Jeff Horn. He's fighting. Now, if you uh, don't know who Jeff Horn is, don't feel bad. Because, um, I mean, it was a shit show. He beat Manny Pacquiao. Now he's fighting on ESPN on a Wednesday night. He, he's the one with the belt, by the way. And uh, he's fighting some guy that I don't really know either. Just want to point out, sometimes when you win the belt, because the judges gifted you, doesn't mean you end up with the big fight. Thursday night, Golden Boy Promotions is back. Diego De La Hoya. Make sure to check that out. Friday, the 15th, Bellator 191 is going down. On Fox Sports 1, we got a PBC card to check out. Uh, also, somewhere in Russia, Povetkin's going to be fighting. Saturday, of course, if you're not going to Place Bell and you're stuck at home, UFC on Fox is going down. Quick notables from Montreal. John McDessie, Chad Laprise, and Nordine Taleb will be fighting. In Ontario, Brandon Cook will be headlining a show. But more importantly, and the big news this week, going down at the Place Bell in Laval, Ida Tiger, Golden Boy Promotions, and HBO Boxing, folks. Got a beautiful undercard. Making her pro debut, finally. Special K. Kim Clavel, also on the card, Simon Keane, Batir Jukambayev, 
the Kazakhstani killer. Make sure to check this guy out, please. Trust me, uh, we're a year or two away from that guy doing some big things. Stephen Butler. Matthew G. Time Germain. It's a solid undercard. Really good fights. Really fun fights. There's two imported fights on the undercard. Nicola Adams. If you don't know her, please check her out. She's making her third foray into the ring. Versus a girl that's got something like 29 fights. So that just gives you an idea. Nicola Adams. Also, Ryan Garcia. The lighter weights, man. They get no respect, but this kid can box and he's fast. It's fun to watch, folks. Then the main event on HBO. Opening up the HBO portion, the main man himself, the gladiator. The Odyssey continues with Eve Ulysses Jr., who's going to be taking on Cletus Seldine. Seldine's 21-0 with 17 KOs. Calls himself the hardest-hitting pound-for-pound fighter in boxing. Well, I'm interested in seeing what happens when the hardest hitting boxer meets the fastest boxer. Also fighting for a WBO strap on that card, Custio Clayton. Custio's had a rocky road to this point, man. And it's just going to be so sweet when he lifts up that belt. So make sure you check out Custio Clayton. Also, on the import side of things, we got Gary O'Sullivan, Antoine Douglas, Really good night of fights going down in Laval, folks. Main event, 25-0. 12 KOs for the WBO strap. Billy Joe Saunders versus David Lemure. David Lemure's got more KOs than Billy Joe's got fights. Billy Joe and David Lemure have been going back and forth, talking some smack online. Hopefully when the fight's over and Billy Joe is defeated, They'll embrace and everything will be water under the bridge. David Lemure by late round stoppage. That's my pick. I think it's going to be a great night of fights. Hopefully everything works out and yours truly will be there. Make sure you follow along on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and all the rest. Make sure you check out the Patreon page. There'd be a couple more of you on there. I'm pretty sure I'd have winter tires already. That being said... Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next week.